Welcome to Edison TV. I'm Scott Wilkinson, and I'm delighted to be here to explore Edison Client Applied Graphene Materials. But first, let's rewind. Following its discovery in 2004, graphene was held as a wonder material. 200 times stronger than steel, the thinnest material ever created, and yet strong enough to support the weight of an elephant. The possibilities seemed endless. And while that potential absolutely were real, few paid attention to the fact that such new technologies take time for commercial development to achieve mass market adoption. The expectations of the average consumer that we'd all be using graphene every day have just not been met. But now that situation is changing. We might be pulling out of the trough of disillusionment. Graphene is coming of commercial age. The global graphene market is now estimated to grow from under $100 million in 2020 to exceed $1 billion US dollars in 2032. And since its founding in 2012, Applied Graphene Materials commercialization strategy has focused on the protective coating markets using its own proprietary technology. And the company says it's now very well positioned to take advantage of a host of new and emerging opportunities. Get the view from management. Joining us today is Applied Graphene Materials CEO, Adrian Potts, after which I'll be talking to Edison analyst, Ang Margaret Crow about her views on the company, uh, the position of it in the market and what she thinks the share price triggers might be. But first, welcome Adrian. Thanks for taking time out of your busy schedule to join us. Thanks, Scott. It's always great to catch up with you guys and uh, look forward to it. Excellent. Well, listen, let's start by talking about AGM's Panty technology um, and your other unique selling points. Great. So what differentiates us from other graphene powder manufacturers is our fundamental approach is to put every kilo of graphene that we sell into a dispersion or an additive format. And this approach enables the customer to have the very best chance of consistently successful outcomes using this amazing material called graphene. Uh, it enables the ease of scaling as well into a customer's production setting from a laboratory environment. We're also able to sell standardized dispersion products through our distributors around the world to maximize access to our potential customers. Alongside our additive uh, dispersions, we also bring extensive application know-how and test data to guide our customers as they innovate. Okay, but I mean, AGM is unusual in offering dispersions to its customers. So why are you different from the rest of the market? What are the benefits? So under the banner of making materials better with graphene, we see great economic advantage uh, in protective coatings that have less corrosion, are longer lasting with graphene, that use thinner layers, that offer longer warranties, and that bring real value for asset owners managing their maintenance costs. Uh, composites that are tougher, less permeable, are lighter weight and reach higher performance, offering life cycle cost benefits. And then environmental benefits. So for industrial coatings, less maintenance means less use of damaging materials that can end up in our oceans. So we're replacing toxic materials in coatings with graphene. We're offering water-based dispersions to support a major push in the coatings industry to reduce organic solvents. For composites, higher performance gas storage tanks are now equipping the future hydrogen economy. And for graphene in concrete, this offers potential to reduce CO2 emissions through making concrete better with graphene. So tell us about the products that your customers have brought to the market, stuff that we might have heard of or might have started to use in our everyday lives. So it's always exciting when our uh, dispersed graphenes are successfully used in a customer product development, which is then launched to the market and generating sales. So customer launched products using our graphene dispersions include industrial protective primers and top coats, offering uh, enhanced anti-corrosion performance and chemical resistance benefits. Uh, conductive coatings with enhanced barrier performance, areas like elastomer products, uh, higher performance carbon fiber composite materials, and then specialty composite applications in storage pressure vessel technology uh, being used in NASA projects and now helping the emerging hydrogen economy. 
uh, higher performance thermal adhesives and car care products uh, to enhance shine and water shedding and to limit UV degradation on car paint. We also launched our own uh, graphene enhanced primer paint products. And these are being used to great effect in areas like coastal settings for enhanced corrosion protection for asset owners. That seems like an enormous breadth of applications. Uh, so is there any room left for any further product development in, in terms of your technologies? Yeah, absolutely. And um, we're focused on using our graphene technology uh, dispersion platform to develop into new adjacencies, which are natural progressions from where we're currently at. Uh, coatings development to add to our paints product range and then to enable new applications in coatings in areas like anti-static flooring, right the way through to higher performance uh, conformal coatings. And in the conductivity space, so using the remarkable performance of graphene to enhance coatings for batteries and then thermal conductivity products for areas like heat dissipation in uh, electric vehicle battery applications. And in the hydrogen space, uh, an amazing uh, emerging economy, uh, making composites perform even better in pressure vessel technology. And then we have specific customer engagements with graphene dispersions that are being used in areas like concrete, in polymers and beyond. And those all help broaden our opportunity potential even further. That sounds you know, amazing, Adrian. In fact, you know, that 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 breadth, it's it's hard for me to hold that in my mind all at one time. And it really does, you know, the message that you seem to be giving me is that potential that we've already talked about in terms of where graphene emerged, you know, we really are coming out that you know, now is coming to you know, now is coming to pass, and we're coming out of that trough of disillusionment. But if you were to focus on, let's say, you know, three of the most significant opportunities that you see in the future. Where would you see them emerging? Which ones of the ones we've discussed could be the biggest? Yeah, so I think, um, you know, first of all, fundamentally, it's clear that our graphene dispersion technology is absolutely key. So how you use this material really well to enable customers to be successful with graphene, uh, putting graphene into uh, dispersions or additives, we see is absolutely key to that area. Um, and it enables end users to deploy the material really well and consistently and enables them to scale that opportunity. We've invested heavily in the industrial protective coatings market, and we see that as a great near term opportunity to uh, bring together the pipeline opportunities that we have in that sector to fruition, customers launching products and then uh, yielding successful outcomes in terms of, of sales. Beyond that, the potential for graphene nanoplatelet dispersions is pretty broad, but it's also aligned with our core sectors. So uh, if we look at uh, industry bodies like the Graphene Council, they talk well to uh, successful outcome potential in industrial coatings, in composite materials, in areas that we can successfully bring uh, graphene uh, to play to uh, achieve that um, the overview of making materials even better with graphene. So we're well aligned with our core sector. And our strategy, I think, is solid around doing the right things well and leading the technology drive for graphene in correctly dispersed additive formats to enable customers accessibility and scope for great success with this exciting class of materials. Well, thank you, Adrian. So we've heard the latest from AGM, and now let's turn to Edison analyst Anne Margaret Crow, who joins us now to share her thoughts on where AGM stands in the market and exactly what its growth potential can't be. So welcome, Anne. Thank you. Very pleased to be here. Brilliant. Well, Anne, tell us, what makes applied graphene materials stand out from the other listed graphene companies that are out there? The thing that makes it stand out for me is the format in which it supplies graphene. Because frankly, graphene's pretty simple to make. Um, you take some graphite and pencil lead, you take off a little bit of it with some sellotape, which is what the Nobel Prize winners did when they discovered the stuff, and you've got some graphene. And then you do that a million, zillion times. You remove the sellotape in some unspecified way, and you've got a pot of graphene. So I could do that and make a fortune. 
but sadly not, because that pot of graphene would be really rubbish quality, be really inconsistent. And if I tried to sell it to a coatings manufacturer, they wouldn't have the faintest clue what to do with it. And what applied graphene's done is they have graphene very, very high quality and they put it in dispersions, which a paint manufacturer instantly knows how to add to their goop to create graphene enhanced coatings. And the second thing is, it's a kind of follow the money kind of thing. So initially, graphene was used to enhance the performance of tennis rackets and golf clubs. But you think, okay, so I buy a graphene enhanced golf club and I can play a bit better. Well, how much is that worth? It's a bit of a gimmick. But in the coatings market, you can actually work out what the economic benefit of using graphene is. So you've got coatings that will last very much longer. So over the lifetime, you can say, right, instead of having to do 10 applications over the life of that asset, I'll only need to do seven or eight. And then immediately you can work out how much you're saving in coatings, how much you're saving in the cost of the coatings, and work out what the payback is for using the graphene enhanced stuff. Actually, the graphene coating isn't more expensive than the alternative. And so you could put a little bit of graphene in a coating and it'll give you the same benefits as putting in lots and lots of nasty stuff like zinc and chromium. And so the graphene enhanced coating may not work out that much more expensive after all. So that's what I, I, that's what I think they really stand out from the other listed graphene companies that I've looked at. Okay, so that's interesting. Um, but what do you think the, the, the price triggers are? What might trigger an upward movement in this company's share price? Well, if you think about applied graphene as a technology company, it's already done a lot of great things. It has a product that works. It works at volume. A lot of companies have a product that works, but when they start making it in volume, the scale-up process is a bit of an issue, but they've fixed that one. They've got customers, yippee. They've got customers that come back even better. But at the moment, none of the customers that they're working with are particularly big. So if you look at the whole of the pipeline, it's not enough to take applied graphene to break even. So what we need is for them to pick up a customer that's got the capacity, the breadth themselves, to really start pushing out gallons and gallons of coatings that have got graphene in them. And there's lots of good things that's happening um, in the background. There's a floor coatings manufacturer doing trials. Um, the Environment Agency is starting to use the coatings on flood protection assets, which has you know, got to be getting the attention of someone, um, Stanvac, Superon are doing some really interesting things in India. So we just need to wait for that RNS coming out that says this big manufacturer has decided to roll out applied graphene dispersions over a meaningful proportion of its products. That's what we're looking for. Thank That's you. That's really clear. Thank you, Anne. And that's it for today. If you'd like to know more about applied graphene materials, then please do read the research that Anne has written that's available on the Edison website. And of course, Applied Graphene Materials has its own website with a section for investor relations. And now all that remains to me to say is thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>